what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Gabe Morenti, who's got his six best bets from this weekend. And in fact, there's a ton for this Saturday. That's when football kicks off here in week number 16. And the early games between the Texans and the Buccaneers. Gabe, are you with or against Bill O'Brien? Well, I'll tell you what, don't look now, Greg, but the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are riding their longest win streak in four years. That's right. They haven't won four football games in a row. Uh, going back all the way to 2016, gunning for their fifth uh, straight uh, win. Uh, you know, Tampa, hard to believe they're 7-7 seven and seven straight up right now. They've done a great job hanging in there. I actually thought the Bucks were somewhat of a sleeper team coming into the season this year. I love the coaching staff uh, that they have with Arians, with Leftwich, uh, with Bowles. They have a lot of talent on this football team, but they got dealt a horrible hand, and they had a brutal schedule. They didn't play a home game for like two months, but here they are right now with a 7-7 seven and seven record. Jameis Winston. I think Jameis Winston has done enough to uh, to warrant a contract extension. Not a four- or five-year crazy deal, but a couple of tack on a couple of more years uh, here. But, hey, Jameis Winston might have a little leverage right now considering he's the first quarterback in NFL history. That's right. First quarterback in NFL history to throw for 450 or more yards in consecutive games. All right, that's all nice, right? But if ends and butts were candies and nuts, we'd all have a Merry Christmas. Are we going to have a Merry Christmas? Well, we better pick some winners. All right, are Tampa going to cover the number here? I say they can. Listen, Houston Texans are capable of beating anybody in the National Football League. They're also capable of losing to anybody in the National Football League. And I don't think it really matters how important this game is uh, to Houston. They're not really going to change who they are. They are who they are. And quite frankly, there's a lot more pressure on the Houston Texans than there is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Buccaneers are playing with house money uh, right now. Now, I'd like it better if Chris Godwin wasn't hurt, all right? Evans has already been out. Losing Godwin doesn't help right now. But I don't really think it matters. I think it's more of a system. I think they're still going to be able to move the football. And I don't think there's any pressure uh, on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in this spot. Uh, The Texans have struggled against NFC teams, all right? Uh, two and six against the spread the last eight times they played against a, an NFC team. And here's a nice little uh, nugget as far as Bruce Arians is concerned. Nine and one, guys, in his career as an home underdog against non-division opponents. Uh, we have an out-of-conference opponent uh, rolling in here. I think the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are going to hang around in a high-scoring football game. It wouldn't surprise me if they won this game uh, outright. And let's keep it simple, stupid. Uh, the Buccaneers have been a, uh, you know, they've been, They've been a live team to bet the over on, all right? 11 to 14 games have gone over uh, the number. I think the number's a little low here, and it's a little insurance as well because if the Bucs uh, don't get it done and the Bucs don't cover, I think it's just because uh, Deshaun Watson and the Texans go off and the game sails over the number. Give me the Tampa Bay Buccaneers plus the points and the over in the uh, first game on Saturday afternoon. It's amazing, James Winston, how inconsistent he's been from a fantasy perspective, but over 450 yards, as Gabe has said, back-to-back games. James Winston's been fantastic for us, going over that number, also betting against Bill O'Brien, a favorite pastime of ours. And you know what? Just uh, just to add on to this, not just 2-6 and six against the spread the last eight, actually, but the last 13 times the Texans have gone on the road to play against an NFC team, they've only won once outright. 1-12, in 12, straight up. Those are not numbers that I want to stuff my stocking with. Give me the Buccaneers, the pirate ship. Arr. Next game up on Saturday, the next game up that we're talking about is the Buffalo Bills and the New England Patriots. It's a weird spot for the Bills because if they win, they set themselves up to play the Patriots in the first round of the playoffs. If they lose, they set themselves up to play Bill O'Brien's Houston Texans, guaranteed to be at 4.30 on Saturday, the first weekend of the playoffs. Game. What does this do to where you're thinking about the spread? Well, first things first, we have to recognize the fact uh, that the Buffalo Bills, you guys, believe this, guys, in the last 16 years, all right, not 16 games, the last 16 years, the Bills have beaten the Patriots three times. Three times. 29 and three. (laughs) 29 and three. And here I am. Thinking to myself, the Buffalo Bills are going to beat the New England Patriots in Foxborough and cause all kinds of chaos going into the final week of the regular season. Remember a couple of years ago, the Buffalo Bills got into the playoffs uh, because Andy Dalton and the Cincinnati Bengals upset 
the Baltimore Ravens. Well, fast forward a couple of years, they don't need Andy Dalton to upset anybody uh, right now. The Buffalo Bills have already cashed uh, their ticket into the playoffs. I think they, they're playing with house money uh, right now. And one of these times, they're going to get uh, to Tom Brady and the Patriots. How about Tom Brady and the, and the Patriots offense right now? Brady's really been struggling. And there was a video out there uh, earlier this week of Brady's elbow. He's sort of snapping his elbow after every throw in practice. Something's not right uh, there. Patriots are banged up. You know, Tom Brady's got a QBR rating of like 40 or less in four straight games, uh, five straight. Never happened to him uh, before. Now, I get it. The Patriots have owned the Buffalo Bills. They have. But they played earlier this year, and uh, what happened? It was 16-10. Uh, the Buffalo Bills uh, were, were a little bit, um, they were a little sloppy early in the football game. Josh Allen is not a great first-quarter quarterback. He gets better as the game goes on. And Josh Allen's gotten better as the season has gone on. He's a better quarterback now than he was even when they played against the New England Patriots earlier in the year. But if you guys recall, it was a 16-10 game. The Bills were moving the football. And uh, surprising, the Patriots cheap-shotted uh, Josh Allen, knocked him out of the game. Uh, Matt Barkley continued, took the Bills to the goal line, actually, and it was like a freak interception. The Bills nearly knocked them off earlier this year. All right? Now, one thing about the Buffalo Bills, they have the best record against the spread of the National Football League. Uh, this year, all right? They're 9-4-1 against uh, the spread. They've been freaking money. They're also money uh, as underdogs, and they have been uh, money as underdogs over the years uh, as well. Um, if you look at this Bills uh, football team, 9-4-1 um, against the spread as a whole, 7-2 and two against the spread the last nine times, uh, they've gotten points. Now, the Patriots' defense is awesome, but their, you know, their offense has struggled. I don't think there's going to be a lot of points in this game, and I legitimately believe that the Buffalo Bills can win this game. They've gotten better uh, every week. They need a lot of things to happen. They need to uh, to beat the Patriots, and then they would need to beat the Jets, and they would need the Patriots to lose to the Dolphins next week. And then suddenly the Buffalo Bills would have a bye uh, in the postseason. How crazy is that? That's where we're at right now. This is going to be an old-school smash Bell football game. Patriots only giving up 12.9 points per game. And really? 12.9 points per game in the National Football League? The Buffalo Bills are only giving up 15.9 points per game. These two teams played uh, earlier this year. They combined for 26 points. I think we have a similar style football game, but this time the Buffalo Bills end up on top. The Patriots are going down, Gary. The Patriots are going down. Buffalo's going to cover this number in a low-scoring game. It's going to go under the number. Just as Tampa is a uh, dead nut over team, uh, Buffalo, 11-3 and three to the under on the year. And how about this with the Patriots? 17 of their last 22 regular season games have gone under the number. It's a low number, uh, but it's going to stay under uh, this number. Give me the Buffalo Bills and uh, the under in this game. There you have it. Going to the under, as Gabe said a few moments ago, the two teams combined for 26 points last time out. Their averages right now is 27 points. That means this game is going under. And, you know, it's Gabe. He's taking the Bills this week against the New England Patriots Saturday afternoon. Let's move on, though, Gabe, to Saturday night, where another one of your best bets lies. It's the Rams and the Niners. Niners lost the Falcons last week. Rams got stopped by Dallas. Two teams coming off losses. Rams, they're not headed to the playoffs this year. The San Francisco 49ers are and yet here you are liking Sean McVay and the Rams. How come? Well, unless you're able to see in the future, uh, Greg, uh, the Rams aren't dead yet. Not dead yet. The Rams need to win uh, both their final two football games. This game against the 49ers and then against the Arizona Cardinals, which is a very winnable game uh, for them. And they need the Minnesota Vikings to lose uh, both their games. Uh, Minnesota's playing at home, though, uh, the final two weeks of the regular season. They get, of course, uh, Green Bay on Monday night, which, hey, anything can happen. And then they play the Chicago Bears uh, next week, in which, hey, the Bears aren't going to roll over uh, for a division rival in the Minnesota Vikings. But, yeah, Greg, the, the Rams have put themselves uh, into a corner right now. Hey, listen, I was wrong last week. I apologize. It was a bad pick taking the Rams against the Dallas Cowboys. But you know what's crazy? I always talk about this, Greg, perception and reality. Now, the perception is that the Rams aren't very good this year. The perception is that Jared Goff blows. The perception is that their playoff chances are all uh, you know, are finished already, all of which are not true. You know what is true? The Los Angeles Rams are 9-5 and five against the spread this year. That's what's true. So you know what? Did I miss the playoffs? Eh, I'm not getting a playoff bonus anyways. <laughs> all I care about is whether they're covering numbers. And, you know, you're wondering, man, you take the Rams all the time. Yeah, they're 9-5 and five against the spread. 
similar situation to to some of these other games in which, you know, the Rams are kind of, you know, they, they know they don't control their own destiny right now. All they can do is go out, try to win the football game on Saturday, then watch Monday Night Football. The San Francisco 49ers, you know, they, they, the collar has to be tightening uh, right now. They, you know, the heat is starting to, uh, to, you know, to intensify. They found themselves, it looked like they were running away with everything. They were going to be the team to beat in the NFC. They were going to get home field. Suddenly, they've lost three football games. And after last week's game against Atlanta, I think their confidence is a little bit shaken uh, right now. And quite frankly, Shanahan doesn't, um, doesn't cover against division uh, opponents. It's 2 7 and 1 uh, the last 10 times. Now, the Rams are really good at bouncing back, all right? They're really good at bouncing back off a loss. 5 and 1 against the spread off of a loss. 5 and 1 against the spread last six uh, division uh, games, albeit the one they didn't cover was earlier this year against this Niners team. Also, a number that I came across that I like the Rams are 4 0 oh, 1 against the spread when they give up 30 or more points. The Rams don't often lose two games in a row. They're a good bounce-back team. It's a division game. And quite frankly, I think San Francisco are a little bit overvalued. Uh, Just a little bit overpriced. I think they're a damn good football team. I think the Niners are in the mix to go to the Super Bowl. But it doesn't mean I want to be laying six and a half points uh, with them here. Give me the Rams to cover again. The 9-5 and ATS Rams. Forget about the playoffs. What do the playoffs do for you? Covering numbers does something for you. And the Rams will cover this number. As Gabe said, it's perception versus reality. Perception is the Rams stink. The reality, 9-5 and five against the spread. They don't have to win these game against the Niners. They just have to be in it. Six and a half points to a struggling Niners team. It's a lot of points. Gabe likes the Rams, and so do I. One final game to get to here, Gabe. It's the New York Giants taking on the Washington football team. It's a battle for Chase Young. Neither team wants to win, or other organization wants to win. Because the loser most likely gets Chase Young in the number two overall pick. So how do you break this whole thing down? You got to love the dynamic, don't you, of the last couple of weeks in the National Football League. Uh, You know, teams want to tank, sure. The players on the field uh, don't want to tank. And it's an interesting situation with the New York Giants. I think Shermer's trying to get as many wins as he possibly can just so his record looks better than it actually is. And he's able to, uh, to keep his job. I don't think he should keep his job either way, even if they won this football game. And I just want to throw out there, I'm a big Daniel Jones uh, backer, all right? I like the kid a lot. I think he's got a great future ahead of him. With that being stated, I'd be playing Eli Manning for the rest of the year right now. Eli deserves uh, this right now. And I don't think it would hurt uh, Daniel Jones to watch from the sidelines. We've seen a lot of young quarterbacks. Uh, You know, Josh Allen was a great example of that. Josh Allen uh, wasn't doing great as a rookie. He got hurt. When he came back, it was almost like it was his second year. Last year, Sam Darnold, similar situation. I don't really think he was hurt, but they wanted him to, you know, just sort of, you're hurt, kid. You're hurt right now. I think it helped him. I think it could help Daniel Jones uh, as well. Guys, I think the number is a little low in this football game. You know, if you look right now, Haskins has provided a little bit of a boost. Uh, This kid can throw the football, all right? Yeah, he's raw, but he's got a cannon for an arm. Even though he doesn't have many weapons to work with, the Redskins are routinely getting into the the, the 20s right now uh, with Haskins. This total is too low. Uh, Both these teams uh, have been cashing uh, numbers to the over, 2-1 to the over, both these teams in their last three football games. We saw the Giants' offense come alive last week against uh, Miami. And the good thing about Daniel Jones on the field is he's either going to be productive or he'll turn the ball over. And it's true. Uh, he'll fumble it, he'll throw an interception, or he's going to throw a touchdown pass. So there's just, there's a lot of, you have a lot of chances to put points up on the board. The Giants' defense is still bad, guys, all right? And I think the Redskins are going to come to play here. Haskins made his NFL debut earlier this year against uh, the Giants coming off the bench. They lost 24-3. That was the September 29th game that the Giants hadn't won a football game uh, since until. So I think there's a little... I think the Redskins are going to be coming to play in this game. I think there's going to be points put up on the board in this game. And 41 and a half is just far too low. I I think both teams are going to get into the 20s and we'll have a comfortable win to the over between the Skins and the Giants, Greg. You said Pat Shermer, even if he wins, should be fired as the coach of the New York Giants. If he wins, you better believe he's going to be fired. He just lost Chase Young. Are you kidding me? He's in a can't-win situation, in other words. Literally, you cannot win this game. He loses? Hey, you're a crappy coach. Right. He wins. Yeah, thanks for costing us the next Lawrence Taylor, maybe. Exactly. He cannot win this game. But you're right. Daniel Jones, 
He looks good. Dwayne Haskins, he's looked better as of late as well. Neither of these defenses are very good. You got to believe this game is going over the number. Saquon Barkley had his best game of his career last year against the Washington Redskins. Didn't play earlier this year in that game, but he lit him up for a buck 70 last year. Take a look at some Saquon props. He's, uh, he's as healthy as he's been right now. I think Saquon closes the season strong. That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel Hurry Up. Those are Gabe's six best bets of the weekend. Almost all of them coming on Saturday. So you got to be watching all three games live this weekend. For Gabe Morenci, I am Greg Sussman. Thanks so much for watching. Enjoy the games. And we'll see you back here on Monday for the final Monday Night Football game of the season between the Vikings and the Packers.